friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Lawn Fawn's Thanks a Latte, Our Friendship Grows, Scripty Autumn Sentiments, Fairy Friends, and Frosty Fairy Friends. So I've stamped the images I'll be using on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. So I'm going to start with the center of my sunflower and I'm going to pull out E43, E44, and E47. I've colored a couple different cards with these sunflowers on them recently and I wanted to do a combo that I haven't done before. I have used the E40s but not quite this light. So I thought I would just try to go a little bit lighter on that center and do something different. And then I'm also going to do the stems of the berries using the E47 and the E44. There wasn't a lot of room there, so I just used the two shades. And also a lot of the stem is going to be covered up in the final card. So I wasn't too worried about having a three color blend. And then I took away that E47 and added in the E42. And I'm going to use these three shades to add a little bit of color to my three fall leaves. The other four leaves that you see stamped there are going to be for my sunflower. So I'm not gonna do those in fall colors. We'll do those in green later on. Then I'm going to lighten up this combo even more by taking away the E44 and adding in the E40 and E41. And I'm going to do my mug. I wanted it to look like a kind of creamy shade. I thought that would be nice for fall, not stark white. And so I decided to use these very pale brown tones, these kind of grayish tones, rather than going with the typical grays or pale aquas that I usually use for coloring white objects. And I really like how this turned out. I'm using very minimal of that E43 on the very edge for a little bit of extra shadow. Probably could have even skipped that one and just started with the E42, but I just wanted to make sure there was enough definition along the edges. And then I blended that out with the E42. And then I used a little bit of that E41 to soften that even further. And then the E40 is going to be my final shade. And I am going to leave white in the center of the mug to really help that look rounded. And I did color the inside of the mug just in case anything of that would show, but in the final card, none of it did. So could have left it blank, but I really wasn't sure at the time if you would see little slivers here and there. For my sunflower, again, I wanted to go with a slightly different combo than I've used before. So this time I pulled out Y13 and Y15 with YR21. And I'm going to concentrate that darkest color, the YR21, right on the base of each petal and then down that center strip. And then I'll blend that out with the Y15, which is a really nice brighter yellow shade, but that YR24 is gonna give it that deep, rich fall tone. And then I'll use the Y13, which is nice and light at the very tips of each of those petals. And then while I have those shades out, I'm also gonna do the center of the other flower that is on the stem there. And I will throw a little bit of these shades into my fall leaves as well. Just coloring right over some of those brown tones. I really want my leaves to have a combination of colors on them. And so I'm blending right over some of the other colors to get them to just be a little bit more cohesive. So once I'm finished with that, I'm going to move on to some red tones, but more of like an orangey red. This is a combo I don't use that often, but I think it's really nice for fall. I'm using R12, R14, and R17 for this kind of daisy looking flower. A little R17 closest to the center, and then blending out with the R14 for the mid-tone. And then the R12 is going to give me a nice highlight again on the edges of all of those petals. And I'm also going to add a little bit of this to the leaf that is on the mug. This leaf is actually from the Scripty Autumn Sentiments as well as the other three fall leaves that I've stamped up there. Um, but I just wanted my mug to have a fall theme. I thought that would give it a nice cozy look, something different. 
So I stamped that large leaf right on there and I think it looks really good there. It's a perfect size for that mug. I'm gonna throw a little bit of those colors onto my fall leaves as well. And then once I'm done with that, I'm gonna to switch to some orange tones and I'm gonna use YR12, YR14, and YR18. I'll add that down to the lower part of the leaf on the mug. I wanted the leaf on the mug to look different than the other fall leaves because it's printed on there, right? Or painted on. So I didn't want it to look as if a fall leaf has just kind of floated down in front of the mug. I wanted it to be a part of that mug. So I did it differently than any of the other colors of the fall leaves that I've done. And then I'm gonna take these shades and also color in the little berries from the Winter Fairies. I just thought that that would add a nice touch of that kind of rusty orange shade into my little bouquet that I'm going to be creating in this mug. So I started with the YR18 for those, blended out with the YR14, and then just added a touch of that YR12 for a little bit of a highlight. And I shaded them all at the bottom right and left the highlight at the top left just to be consistent. And I felt like it, there wasn't enough contrast on those, so I did go back with my YR18 and add a touch more of dark right there just to kind of make them pop a little bit more. I'll also throw a little bit of this shade into those leaves, just kind of picking different places so it's not all the same, um, especially since they're not shaped the same. Two of them kind of are, although they're different sizes, but the other one is clearly from a different kind of tree. So I didn't want them to have the same colors in the same places, even though I am using kind of the same color palette. I just wanted it to appear in different places on those leaves. And then to help that blend in with the previous shades, I'm gonna bring back my Y13 to just blend over the edge of the YR12. And then my next combo is going to be R35, R37, and R39. I think this is a nice cranberry red, which works great for the fall season. It kind of has that wine red shade to it. I added shading with that R39 to each of these little um, bell-shaped flowers and then I'm going to blend out with the R37 and leave a little bit of space for that R35 for a nice highlight. And I like how um, kind of rich these flowers look now with that combo. I think it was a nice addition to the color palette that I was already using. And I will throw a little bit of these shades into my fall leaves as well. Again, just coloring right over some of the places that um, I've already colored just to really get those shades to blend together. I will pull back out the YR12 to help that um, kind of just feather into the previous shades. And I'll also pull in the Y13. So each of the lightest shades is what I'm going back to to make those colors blend together. Then for the leaves and stems, I'm going to start with YG93, YG95, and YG97. And I'll do the two stems of the flowers that are left, starting with that YG97 and blending out with the YG95. And then I'll use a little bit of that YG93 for a highlight on the end of the stem for the daisy looking flower and the tips of the petals for the bell shaped flower. And then for the leaves for the sunflower, I wanted to darken them up a bit. So I'm gonna bring in YG99 as well. And I'll start at the base of each of those leaves and add a little bit of that. And then I'll blend that out with the YG97, which for some reason was looking a little bit darker. So I kind of just colored over the YG99 with that one. So you could skip one of those. And then I blended that out with the YG95, just pulling that color toward the tip. And then I'll use the YG93 and then because I didn't get as much contrast with the darker shades like I wanted, I decided to go a little bit lighter with the highlight. So I'm gonna pull in YG91 as well and add that to the very edges of those leaves. There's just a sliver of space there, so you could do it or not, but 
I'm going to trim these images out with their matching dies. Next I'm going to pull out some pattern papers and I'm going to use one from the Favorite Flannel 6x6. Six six. I'm going to take out this creamy diagonal plaid print. And I'm also going to use one from the Spiffier Speckles. I'm going to go with one of the foiled papers in this lighter pink shade. It's kind of like a corally pink. I'm going to trim out the cream colored plaid with the largest of the large stitch rectangle stackables. And then I'll use a stitched circle stackable for the lighter pink. So I'll just pop those out of the dies and set those aside. And then I'm going to take some ground coffee cardstock and die cut the scripty thanks from that. And I'll also cut that out twice from some craft cardstock. So then I can just pop those out once I have those ready and I'll set them aside for now. I'll glue those together in a little bit, but having those two layers of the craft underneath is just gonna help raise up that sentiment a little bit. So I'm gonna pop the rest of that piece of craft into my Misty to stamp my sentiment. I'm doing that in some walnut ink and I'm stamping out just wanted to say, and I'm gonna stamp that down twice to make sure it's nice and bold when this ink dries back so it's still visible. And then I'll set that aside and pop my card base in my Misty. I'm using a piece of craft cardstock again for the card base. And I'm gonna create a whole little scene on the inside of the card with one of the other mugs from Thanks A Latte. And then the leaves and the sentiment are from the Scripty Autumn Sentiments. And then I also wanted to add the little latte center to that as well. So I just lined that up and then re-stamped that along with the sentiment to make that a little bit bolder. And I really like how that turned out. So now I'm ready to start assembling. I'm going to take that plaid pattern paper and adhere that to the front of my card. It is a standard A2 size card, so it's four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall. So I'm just lining up those corners and making sure they're straight. And then for the lighter pink piece, I want to pop that up on some foam tape. So I'm going to add another piece of white cardstock behind that just to make it a little bit more sturdy. And then I've added my foam tape to the back. So I'll just peel off those release papers and I'm going to pop that up in the center, but toward the top of the card so that I have plenty of room for my sentiment down below. So next I wanted to work on my sentiment because I did want to make sure that I was going to have room for everything that I wanted to do down at the bottom. So I'm just popping out the inner pieces from the little die cuts and then I'm going to start gluing those together using my Barely Art Precision Craft Glue. It has that super fine nozzle that helps me get into all those little places and I'm just putting down a little bit so that the glue doesn't squish out too much and then I can grab the craft piece the second craft one and I'm going to line that up carefully while that glue is still wet it does dry very quickly so I kind of have to work fast and just make sure that all of those letters are lined up nice and straight so that it um, you know doesn't look kind of wonky you know I want it to just look like it's an extra thick sentiment and then I'm going to take the darker piece and I'll add some glue to the back of that one I'm going to use my EK success reverse tweezers to hold on to that just to keep my fingers out of the glue and to help me line it up straight because this time I wanted it to be a little bit off center to create a bit of a drop shadow so I'm just kind of lining it a little bit shifted to the left and then once I have that kind of um, with the end in place then I use my fingers to straighten out the rest of it to make sure that I have like an equal amount of that drop shadow on the left part of or rather on the right part of each of the words and then I die cut the rest of my sentiment down with a everyday sentiment banner and I'm just kind of fiddling around with that to see how I want it to go. I thought it would be nice for the back end of it to go behind the K, 
but then it also was behind the th and it covered some of the words so it's just kind of fiddling around with that and trying to figure out how i wanted that on the card and i decided that either way i had space for it so i'm just going to come back to the sentiment later on i'm not going to attach it just yet i'll worry about that once i get my images situated so I'm going to start with the mug because that's the largest one and that's kind of the base of this whole bouquet. And then I'm going to start arranging my flowers and stems into it. Um, for those of you who didn't know, I used to work at a craft store and I was a floral designer. So I used to make floral arrangements on a daily basis. And so this was kind of fun for me to kind of go back to that and play around with these little flowers and create a little nice arrangement. I did have to trim down the stem of that daisy looking flower a little bit because um, when I tucked it behind the mug to hide the stem, it also put some of the petals behind the mug and I didn't want that. So I just trimmed that stem really short so that the petals could be in front. And then I'm just arranging the rest of those berries and trying to get an idea of what needs to be glued down first. And then once I have an idea in mind, I'm going to start adhering things. I'm adding that glue to the mug way down at the bottom. So I have plenty of room to slide things in behind it. And then I'm going to use the sunflower as a placeholder and kind of slip things in behind that as well. Um, these kind of bell-shaped flowers, I wanted to be up at the top, but a little bit leaning toward the left. And then I'm going to have one of these berry clusters also coming out the left side. And then I have the daisy flower that I want over on the right hand side. And because I cut that stem down, I was able to really turn it and kind of make it look like it was coming out the side rather than just pointing straight up. And then I'll take that other berry cluster and add that to the empty space over on the top right. Just trying to make everything nice and balanced. And then I also have a few leaves that I want to add. So I'll take this large fall leaf and tuck that toward the top, kind of weighing out the bell-shaped flower there. And then the other two fall leaves I decided to wait on because I wasn't sure where I wanted those to go exactly. So I'm going to go on to my green leaves for my sunflower now. And I just want to make sure that I'm not covering up too much of the leaf that is stamped on the mug. So I'm kind of turning those leaves in different directions to, you know, make sure that they look nice and full and like they're coming out from around that sunflower, but that they're not covering up too much of um, what I don't want covered. Um, I'm going to tuck a few of the leaves kind of pointing up as well. And then this last one I'll tuck over to the left hand side along with the other small one. And then once I'm ready to add that sunflower, I'll just glue that down into place over top. So now I can turn my attention back to that sentiment and I'm still trying to make it work. Uh, but it's just not quite coming together. I thought maybe I could put the... Uh, strip towards the top or you know at the base of the circle to kind of make everything fit but I just wasn't loving the way that it was looking so what I decided to do was change tactics completely and shift where that little sentiment strip went which also meant I had to change the sentiment completely so I added some foam tape to the back of the scripty thanks and I'm going to adhere that so that it is up kind of overlapping the bottom of that circle. And then I stamped out a different sentiment from the same reveal wheel sentiment set. And this one says, I can't thank you enough. I added some foam tape to the back of that and I'm tucking that up under the word thanks as well so that the very bottom edge of it just overlaps and just integrates the whole thing into the scene. And then I had the two fall leaves left and I was just playing around with the placement of those to see where they would look the best. I ended up deciding to put the larger one there over on the left. It was going to cover some of the berries, which I didn't really want, but it was really where it looked the best. So I just tucked that into my arrangement. 
And then this small one, I decided I'm going to pop up on foam tape and add down near the sentiment to just draw extra attention to that. So then I decided that it definitely needed a little bit of glitter and I went with the uh, platinum stickles today again. I really love this shade for fall. It's kind of like a very light tan. Goes really nice with that craft cardstock. So I'm adding it to the bottom of each of the letters in the scripty thanks. And then I'll also add just the barest amount to some of my flowers and leaves. This does cover up your coloring, so I'm always very sparing where I use it, just to add a little bit of shimmer, but I don't want to get too carried away with it. So like I said, I added it to the centers of all of my flowers and the tops of the bluebells, the centers of all my leaves, and then just a tiny smidge on each of those berries. So that is going to finish this one up. I will pick that up so you can see how that catches the light and give you another peek at the inside. So this one is so different from my usual style. It has no critters or kiddos on it, which is very, very different for me. But I really do like how it turned out. So I hope you guys enjoy it too. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and leave me a comment down below. I love to hear from you guys. All of the products I use will be listed and linked for you in the description bar below in case you'd like to pick up anything for yourself. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two more fall videos that I thought you might also enjoy. You can click on either one to check them out. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I hope you had a good one, and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye-bye.